It's done. Um, I'm, I'm thankful to have my pastor here tonight, Pastor oh, really? Nathan over there sitting in the corner. Yeah. And just thankful to have him. Uh, he's pastor of New Beginning Community Outreach Church in Montague, and that's the church that we joined up with. Uh, when we closed down our church, we joined up with Pastor Nathan over there in, in Montague. Uh, I put him through the test first I, when I first... I made sure he was preaching the cross. I was talking to him a little bit. I said, all right, I, we good. I'm good now. But uh, I've just been so thankful. got Brother Brian here and my Aunt Kay here. Um, just so thankful for Pastor Nathan and and what's going on right now at New Beginning. And um, we've been really blessed over the last several months. The Spirit of God has been moving in a, in a mighty way. Uh, but how many of you know it, it really starts with you? That's it. It starts with you. Yes. It starts with you as an individual in your personal relationship uh, with the Lord. And whenever you'll find, and like Sister Sharon Cornell preached when she was here uh, just a few Friday nights ago, and she talked about it, whenever you have the inflow right, you can't help but have the outflow. Amen. 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 When you have the inflow right, you can't help but have the outflow. So I'm just so thankful for the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit, what he's been doing in my life personally, what he's been doing in Pastor Nathan, Brother Brian, and my Aunt Kay, and, and all the people at uh, New Beginning. Um, just to share a little bit, we already talked about the homeless ministry that we're, we're trying to get up and get going in, in New Orleans through outreach to the homeless. I, I see some of you have already brought some clothes. So thankful and appreciative for that. Uh, when I get back, I, I got to check and see. Um, we're going to look in the shed, that, that extra shed, and see if we got a little room to store some of that stuff. If I bring that to the, to the house, my wife probably, I'll be living in the shed with the clothes. <laughs> but we're going to check at the church and see if we got some extra room, and we're going to uh, start migrating that stuff over there. But what happened last week as I, as I left, as I was leaving, I stopped outside. I was talking, I was sharing with all of you, uh, just kind of talking to Sister Matilda, right? Talked to Sister Matilda and a few other ones, and uh, that was a real blessing. And I stopped outside and talked to Brother Robert, and I can't remember the other brother's name that was here. We was Gene. in a, Gene, Gene and his wife, and, and uh, we were talking, and, and I told him, I said, well, because they, they wanted to get involved, uh, Brother Robert and, and the other ones, and, and uh, Sabrina. Um, so I thought, I said, well, right now I'm looking for a trailer. I'm looking for about a 6 by 12 trailer or something to put a barbecue pit on and put some, some boxes and stuff to carry things in and things like that. And I, I've been looking around, and I actually uh, I had, I shared with the church. I had a guy that was going to sell me one for $500. I found it on Facebook, and uh, we had it all set up. And I, it, he, was, he was over there in Alabama, and they had a little hurricane that come through. And I thought, I said, well, I'm going to get back with you. And after the storm passes through, and I... I messaged him on Facebook and on the messenger, and he never answered. And I, just in case you don't know, like I share with our church, you can tell on Facebook Messenger when somebody opens your message. So if you open somebody's message, you have to answer them now. If you, you don't want to talk to them, don't open it. But he didn't, uh, he didn't answer, so I, I waited exactly about 24 and a half hours. I didn't want to pester him. And I messaged him back, and about, he never answered, and about an hour later, he put on their soul. And I had some choice words for him in, in my mind that I had to repent about. I said, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Paul said, you know, I know what he's talking about. Y'all do too. Y'all don't act like y'all do. <laughs> but um, I repent. I said, Lord, I, that's not the right way. I've asked you for your will to be done, Lord. And uh, I said, but Lord, I really don't see how you're going to be $500 for this nice trailer, but... <laughs> Your will be done, Lord. So to make a long, a long story just a little bit shorter, we was outside talking with Robert. And Robert said, man, I got a trailer about that size. He said, I, I'm actually looking to sell it. Then the other brother said, man, I got a trailer 16 foot. And I, he said, I'll give it to you. And uh, wow. I said, well, brother, I said, that's, that's really, a, 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 you don't ever want to, like, turn down something free, right? <laughs> I said, well, brother, it's quite bigger than what I'm looking for, but... Uh, let me look at what Robert's got, and I'll get back with you. I was on my way home, and Robert called me. He said, look, we got a three-way trade going. I'm going to take that trailer, you take my trailer, and everybody's even. That's right. So, <laughs> praise God. Amen. I said, bless him, the Lord. I said, well, Lord, I guess you can't be $500. <laughs> that's my God. Amen. That's our God. He'll provide. Amen. So, uh, that's in the works. So thankful for that, Robert. That's a blessing. Uh, so thankful for all of you that's uh, supplying the clothes. Um, but even more than that, we, we got what we're starting up now also. Uh, 
Pastor Nathan's brother Chad had been mentioning about a nursing home going and visiting some nursing homes. And uh, yesterday I was sitting in my office and I was thinking about it. So I said, well, let me, uh, I was kind of in between doing some things. I said, let me look up in some nursing homes. And I wrote some names down. And the first one I called, man, it was like, yeah, can you come this weekend? Okay. I, was, I was surprised about that. So uh, we're going we're gonna to go into the nursing home starting this Saturday. We're going to try to start doing it at least once a month. Yeah. Um, in the future, maybe even a couple of times a month, depending on what the Lord uh, allows and, and what he provides. But I'm saying all that to say all this, and we might even hit on some of that in the message a, uh, a little bit as we go forward. There's opportunities, people, yes. out there to, to minister. There's opportunities to, to reach out to people, to, to, uh, to be a part of their lives, you know. And I know the church is not about... Um, Activity. It's not all about the activity. But the Word of God says that if the Holy Spirit is moving and operating in your life, that there should be some activity being produced. Our relationship with God is not based off of our activity. But when our relationship with God is right, there ought to be some activity being produced in our lives. That's biblical. We can get scripture and prove that. Amen. I'm not making something up. That's just how. But we never base our relationship off of those things. We never put our trust and faith in those things, right? But we should see those things as an outflow of what the Holy Spirit's pouring into us, what He's doing inside of us as He's moving and operating inside of us as we're exercising proper faith in who Christ is and what Christ accomplished. Amen. That there should be grace flowing in our hearts and in our lives and an outflowing of grace going out to others should be taking place. But what I want to tell you is the same thing I shared with Matt. The same opportunities that we have together with New Beginning. You all are welcome. We're the body of Christ. This isn't about the New Beginning Church. This isn't about the crossway here. And it should never be about one church or one ministry. But when we're preaching and teaching the same thing and we're believing the same thing, we ought to be willing to be together and cooperative with one another in the ministry that's out there, the opportunities. So I just want to lay that out there to you all. Be praying about that. Um, <coughs> Hey, if you, if you need bonus, the Lord, is a, he's a good father. Amen? Amen. He'll provide. He'll probably provide that what you have need of. But also, uh, sometimes, you, sometimes you just got to step out into a, a place where you're uncomfortable and allow the Lord to show up. That's and right. That, that he'll show up. He'll show up. Amen. He'll show up. It's never easy. Uh, Matt and I were talking. And, look, I'm getting into the message. Y'all just bear with me. <laughs> Matt and I were talking the other day. I mean, actually today we probably talked. I was on the road and he was on the road. And we talked for about an hour today. And it was... Uh, Really, just a blessing. It's the first time we've done that in a long time. We just talked about the Word of God and what God's doing in our lives. And um, it's, it's uh, just so important. And I lost my train of thought, but it's just so important that we allow the Holy Spirit to move and to operate and, and to have His way inside of us and to Amen. do what He Amen. wants to do, church. He's, uh, uh, he's more than willing. He's more than able. And He desires to have His way inside of His people. Amen. He desires Amen. a people that Amen. He can move and and, and operate in and grow in. Um, so with that said, I'll probably say some more as we go, but Isaiah, I believe it is. Uh, let me look and make sure um, Isaiah chapter 42 is where I want to go to tonight. And I want to preach a message tonight entitled Beneficiaries of a Better Covenant. Beneficiaries of a Better Covenant. And I want to really make sure that we're, we're, we're focusing on who Christ is and what he did. Because here recently, here lately, uh, the Lord has really been this new covenant. Amen. This this new covenant, this work of Christ and him crucified and what he did at Calvary and my union with him in that being a partaker in that this this thing has really lately. It's just been amazing. Me, I told Pastor Nathan the other day, we, my, my friend Robert and I were home, on our way home from prayer meeting Monday night. And I'm telling you, we started talking about the new covenant. It's like the Lord just made this new covenant so amazing to me. And I was just sitting there in awe at what it is that he's accomplished on our behalf. And that word beneficiary, whenever we hear that word, we think about an insurance policy, some type of insurance policy, whether it be a, a, a car insurance or, or life insurance. But understand that you and I, we're beneficiaries of Christ. That's what we are. Yeah. The new covenant that God made with his son Christ at Calvary's cross says whosoever will. 
Come unto me. And if you'll come unto him and you'll partake in that new covenant, what he told the Jewish people, he said, you must eat of my flesh and you must drink of my blood. That makes you a partaker when you by faith partake in who Christ is and what Christ accomplished at the cross. Amen. You become a beneficiary of a better covenant. The writer of Hebrews says you become a beneficiary of a better covenant. Based off of better promises with better blood. Amen. Not the blood of bulls and goats anymore, but the blood of a spotless lamb. The blood of a spotless man who's seated at the right hand of the Father. Of the Father. And you or I, we, you and I, we're beneficiaries of that. We've got some things that, that come to us because of what Christ did at Calvary. It's, Paul, it's why Paul would tell, I, I believe uh, the, the Galatians or the Corinthians is slipping my mind right now, but he would tell them that he would be scared for them, that they'd be removed from the simplicity that was in Christ Jesus. That this gospel message is so simple. That in who Christ is and what he did on our behalf that we can receive everything. Listen, everything that we have need of. But what's important about that, what we've got to understand and what we've got to have our eyes set towards is that there's benefits that come with this new covenant that God expects you and I to unwrap to be partakers of. There are things that are to come into our lives that God expects for you and I to be partakers of, that He expects for us to allow to take place in our life, that we would bear fruit, yes. that we would bear more fruit, and that we would bear much fruit. <coughs> That's what He wants to do in your life and in my life. Amen? Amen. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 1. The Old Testament prophet Speaking, and what you'll see here is you'll see the Old Testament uh, prophet uh, speaking this, what's called a song by some, speaking this, and he is speaking as God would be speaking himself, and he's speaking about the person of Jesus Christ, the one to come. He says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment for the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. And this is the judgment. Real quick, let's intervene right here. This is the judgment. What Christ did at Calvary sets the standard. It's the judgment. You'll either be judged in Calvary or you'll be judged by Calvary. Amen. One or two. You'll either be judged in Calvary or you'll be judged by Calvary. What do you mean, preacher? Calvary's going to be a witness against you if you're not born again on the day that you stand before God. Calvary will be a witness against you. But if you find yourself in Christ, crucified with Him, trusting in who He is and what He accomplished at Calvary, that union that takes place where you become immersed into Him at His death, buried with Him, by baptism into death. Resurrected into newness of life. Calvary will stand for you. That's the judgment that's being talked about. That perfection that Christ lived. His life. His perfect life. Shedding his perfect innocent blood. For you and I. On our behalf. So if you're in here tonight and you're not born again. The word of God says. And I say this often. You must be born again. Amen. You must be born again. That's the most important thing that could ever happen in an individual's life is that you must be born again. Every time, just about every time I minister, I try to make sure I mention the born again experience. Because the Bible says that you must be. Listen to me. You must be born again. You've got to experience that regeneration of heart. It's not a religion. It's not being baptized into water. It's not going to communion or taking part in some church ritual. It's a spiritual thing that takes place when an individual comes to a place in their life where they realize that they're lost and they're undone, that they've sinned against a holy, righteous God and that they need saving. And they surrender that heart to Jesus Christ and what He did in Calvary, the Spirit of God moves in. Listen, that's the benefit of the new covenant. That's the first benefit of the new covenant, that regeneration. 
that takes place in a person's life, that regeneration yeah. of the heart. When that heart, the word of God tells us, is brought back to a former state. That's what regeneration means. Yes. God sends his spirit and his spirit regenerates us. He brings us back to the former state that humanity was when he was perfect in the garden with God. And then relationship is now found in Christ Jesus. That's the born again experience. It's more than a sinner's prayer. Yes. It's more than going to church and showing up and doing things. Yes. It's a spiritual thing that you know what happens when it takes place. Amen? Amen. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. And will hold thine hand and will keep thee. And listen to what he says. And give thee for a covenant of the people. That word covenant means agreement. That's simply what it is. A testament and a covenant and agreement. We talked about it a little bit Saturday. How I mean it's last Sunday when I was here. How that we are in now the New Testament times. And that word testament means covenant. It means agreement. That's what the Bible is. It's broken down in two parts. It's the old agreement and it's the new agreement. We've entered into a new agreement in Christ Jesus. Amen. The word of God tells us. And there are benefits that come with that new agreement. There are benefits that come because of what Christ did at Calvary's cross. I'm here to tell you that you acting holy and doing holy righteous things does not make you saved. But the spirit of holiness, if he lives inside you, he should be in the process of producing holy and righteous living inside of you. Amen. Amen. He should be in the process of doing a work on the inside of you, cleansing you. Same. Remember, we talked about sanctifying you. What that word sanctif sanctification or sanctified by the Spirit means. We talked about it. It means set apart. Set apart by God, for God, for His working. For Him to do a work inside of you. And if the more you grow in this walk with God, the more you grow in this thing, the more and more sanctified you ought to become. The more and more it ought to be like Paul said, not I that liveth, but Christ Amen. that liveth in me. Some people don't like when you talk about holiness and righteousness. Righteousness. Well, you're talking about legalism. No, I'm talking about what the Holy Spirit ought to be yeah. producing in your life. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at the Word of God. And we'll look at it because Titus said that grace teaches us. Grace teaches us how to live a holy, righteous life. Amen. Amen. That's what I want, church. That's what I, I, I want the righteousness of Christ cloaked upon me because of my faith in who Christ is and what he did. But I also want the righteousness of Christ to be producing in me a righteous life that looks separate from this world. But he's given us his son for a covenant. That's the prophecy that's going on right here. He said, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I will hold thine hand and will keep thee and will give you for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentile to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the... Listen, has anybody had their, their blinded eyes open? Hallelujah. Amen. Has anybody been brought out of a prison, a bondage, a slavery of sin? I'm talking about Jesus Christ and what he came to do. How that he came to set the captive free. A covenant on our behalf. To open the blind eyes. To bring out the prisoners from the prison. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory. Will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Behold the former things have come to pass. And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth. I tell you. This is the covenant. That God has made with Christ yes. on our behalf. This is good stuff. This is deep stuff. It really is. It's really just the deep manifold wisdom of God. Just what you and I have access to in Christ. You and I have access to many, many wonderful spiritual things. Listen, listen. He's a provider of our physical needs. He'll provide his people with what they have need of. But the thing I'm looking for, the thing I'm chasing after is this spiritual work that God wants to do inside of me. A spiritual production. I've been last night, I, I, I prayed and I was laying on my bed and I was just praying and weeping and, and talking to the Lord. And I prayed for you all. I prayed for our church and the old folks home. And then I began to pray for me. 
I said, Lord, I want to walk in the spiritual gifts that you have. I want to prophesy, Lord. I want to give tongues and interpretation, Lord. I want to be used in all these different areas, Lord, that you want. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that, church. The Apostle Paul said, covet the gifts. Covet these gifts that God has for his church. There should be a moving and an operation, at least a desire inside of your life as the Holy Spirit moves upon you to desire the things of God. Listen, not for yourself, but for your brothers and your sisters. Amen. That's what God does. God desires to use you to bless your brothers and your sisters, to, to use you to place a gift inside of you so that people can see what he's doing, what's going on, so that he can bless them through you. I'm saying, Lord, I want to prophesy. Lord, I want to, I want to operate in, in, in words of wisdom, words of knowledge. Lord, I want to give tongues and interpretations. I want to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, Lord. Yeah. Not for me. Not for me, Lord, but for, to bring glory to you, Lord, so that people can see that you took an old rotten, vile sinner, a messed up piece of human garbage is basically what my life was, and you turned it around and you cleansed me and you washed me and you filled me with your spirit, Lord, and, and you're going to do mighty great things through this. Amen. Not because I earned it or worked it, worked for it, but simply because, Lord, it's what you desire to do. It's what he desires to do. Listen, you have access. Each and every one of you in this place tonight because of what Christ did has access to the moving and the operation of the Holy Ghost, to the gifts of the Spirit moving and operating in your life. But let me tell you something, that's got to be secondary. That, that maybe even need to be third dairy, if, that, if I could say that. I, I, we in South Louisiana, I could say third dairy. That's, that's third, third and dairy. Third dairy. That, that may even need, need to be third. What you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about first and foremost, you have access into a living, breathing, moving relationship yes, amen. with God. Yes, hallelujah. You have, you have access into a relationship. With God through who Christ is and what he did. He wants to teach you who he is. He wants to show you things about. Listen, he wants to show you things about himself. He'll use the preacher to do that many, many times. But he wants to just do it with you and him. He'll do that. It's, it's nothing special about myself or Matt or Robert or any other preacher or teacher or anything else that is used of God. Except that for some odd reason he chose to use uh, use people. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. It's what he chose to do. <clears throat> but he wants to reveal himself to you in a personal, intimate way. Yes. He wants to teach you things about himself. He wants to show you how good he is. Like that song we sang, Amazing Love. Amazing love. I mean, it's an amazing love. I was telling Matt today, I've just been thinking about my life. And I think I shared a little bit with you all the last couple of times I preached. Because I just can't stop talking about how good that the Lord has been to me. How that he took a low, down, rotten, cheating, adulterous, fornicating, uh, drug using, alcohol drinking, pride filled scumbag. Like myself, who only cared about himself. How he chased me down, how he pursued me constantly. Robert pursuing me, pursuing me over and over again, continuously dealing with me, continuously tugging on my heart, continuously trying to get my attention, continuously long suffering. Last night I, I just cried. I said, Lord, you've been so good to me. You've been so long suffering, Lord. You chased me down. You wouldn't let me go. Lord, why do you love me like this? Why do you love me like this, Lord? Why would you give your, your only begotten son, Father, for something like me? And he's done the same things for you. Hallelujah. He's done it for you. And he wants to reveal himself in a special way to you. That's first. Remember, though, the way he's going to reveal himself to you will always line up with Scripture. It'll always line up with the Word of God. Right? Right? Secondary, <clears throat> even before the gifts. <clears throat> Fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit is more important than the gifts of the Spirit. Because if you're not walking in the fruit of the Spirit, you cannot properly function in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. You'll find yourself just like Corinth and you'll be...
tingling symbols. It won't even make no sense. You'll have a whole bunch of gifts and people say, well, if that's God, I don't really want it. Because they've got to see the true love of God, the true gifts of the Spirit being manifest in a person's life. The true, I mean, the true fruit of the Spirit being manifested. Love, kindness, peace, joy, long-suffering. Are you long-suffering? Listen, I've been saying it every time I come over here and preach. Evaluate yourself. Don't evaluate the preacher or the, or the, or the teachers or the singers. or just Evaluate yourself. Are you long-suffering? Do you have a long suffering spirit about you? Are you willing to be patient with someone just like the Lord was patient with you? If we evaluate ourselves, a lot of times we fall short of those things. And what should happen when we see ourselves falling short of that, that ought to cause us to fall on our knees before God, right back to Calvary, saying, Lord, I need this in my life. I need this. So before we covet the gifts, we ought to covet the fruit. And once we see the Lord moving and operating and the fruit of the Spirit being manifested in our life the proper way it should be, because of, listen, because of the covenant, back to the covenant, because of faith in who Christ is and what Christ did, amen, the Holy Spirit has access to produce inside of us the things that He wants to produce inside of us. We get to be a part of this agreement. Listen, God the Father made an agreement with God the Son at Calvary's cross, amen, and now you and I, sinful man, we come and we're placed in Christ at the cross and the agreement that Christ made with his father is now yes. we are the beneficiaries yes. of that agreement so I found myself so many times brother Troy saying Lord how are you going to do these things in me I just don't see it I'm a mess <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm just a low down mess Lord but he never ceases to amaze because just like we kind of maybe mentioned I believe Sunday morning about the the potter's will. He takes that clay and he'll break it down again. He'll break it down again. And that's what he did with me over. I'm sure he's not done yet. Still a long way to go. But I know one thing. I'm in a different place now than when I was five months ago. And I'm grateful and thankful for that because I was in a miserable place. I had a whole bunch of this. But I didn't have this. I can sit here and explain to you everything I'm explaining to you now. Probably even better. But the experience, that epignosis, experiential knowledge is what I'm seeing now. And oh, it feels good. Are you experiencing that in your life? All because of Christ and the covenant that he made. So you and I were beneficiaries of this covenant. Look, I'm running out of time. Good night. Um, I want to go to 2 Peter real quick, chapter 1, and show you what God wants to do in us. I'm, I'm probably going to just skim through some of this because i got somewhere I want to get. Um, Simon Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1-5. through 5, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained light, precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Let's see if that word knowledge is... That word knowledge is epignosis, and that's an experiential knowledge. It's what it is. It's epignosis, and it means experience, and you know this because you've experienced it. According as his, listen to this, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things, I said he's given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So everything that you have need of to live a good life and to live a godly life, amen, God has given that to you in Christ Jesus. They can be found in the person and the work of Christ Jesus. I love how Matt does it with the old man. The old man is dead, amen, he made the tomb. I remember when he first made that, we went to the prison and he brought that to the prison house with him. He, the old man is dead and we've been placed into, into the new man, into Christ. Amen. And inside of this new man, Christ, inside of him is everything we have need of. Everything that we have need of, God has given it to us in Him. I know you've heard this a million times over, but I'm telling you right now, if you aren't experiencing it like you should be, don't give up on God's way. Don't give up on God's method, His message, which is Christ and Him crucified. See, that's what happened to me. I came to a place to where the message of the cross was only working here, and it wasn't working in here. And that was miserable. 
That was a miserable place to be. But what it caused me to do is constantly evaluate what I was believing. Constantly looking at it. And I finally got to a place, and I've shared this many times, to where I determined, I said, you know what? Everywhere I look in this old Bible of mine, Christ crucified is the way. Christ has made a way for me to get what I don't have. And I'm not talking about things. I'm talking about the spiritual victory that I need. Because that's why I came to him. I needed victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. I realized that I was lost and I was undone. And I was a sinner on my way to hell. And there was no way that I could just, there was no way I could make it if somebody else didn't do something in me. And I evaluated the word of God. And I seen over and over and over Christ in whom crucified God made a covenant with his son. And he wants to give me victory. So I came to a place. I said, Lord, I believe it. I see it. It's there. It's in this book called the Bible. I believe this is your word. If Christ crucified is not the way, then this ain't your word. Because according to this word, Christ crucified is the way. That's right. And I began to cry out and say, Lord, I've got to have victory. I've got to get this. Something's got to happen. Something's got to change. Yes. And after a season, he's faithful, church. He showed up. Now I understand. Listen to me. Now I understand what Paul was saying when he told Timothy, Timothy, fight the good fight. Fight the fight of faith. Fight to believe. Fight to hold on to what you've been given. Fight to hold on to God's word, to what it says, where your victory is at, where your provision is at, where your peace is at, where your joy is at, where that victory over sin is at, where that victory over those mental issues are at, where that, that victory over those feelings are at, that all that stuff that you have need of, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, all those things, church, that you have need of, fight to believe. That Christ made a covenant on your behalf and in him you have access to all of those things. Fight to hold on to that. Fight to believe. Well, preacher, I don't see it happening. I don't see the things in my life that I need to see that I, that I want to see. Well, all I can tell you is fight to hold on. Keep believing. It's the word of God from the back to the front, from the front to the back, over and over again. It's all about who Jesus is and what Jesus did and all about how good God is and how good we ain't. And how that he wants to give us what we have need of in Christ. What did he say at the end of those last few verses that we read in Isaiah? He said, no one's going to glory in what the Lord does. No one's going to get any glory out of this except him. It's all about Jesus, church. It's all about that covenant. So I want to encourage you to understand. And I'm not doing yet. Matt said, uh, he, he said he likes to keep it to 45 minutes. But I'm up here, so it don't matter. <laughs> Amen. He didn't tell me I had only 45 minutes. He just said that's what he likes to do on Wednesday nights. Because the people got to work. I said, well, I got to work too. So, But I want to encourage you to understand that there are benefits in Christ. Amen. Listen, we have benefits in Christ. And he paid for you and I to grab a hold of those benefits. And like Brother Ryan Keel, he preached a message one time at, before I closed down the church. And it was called Unwrapping the Benefits. Unwrapping or Unwrapping the Cross is what he named it. We have gifts in Christ that are endless, church. Access to whatever we have need of. Some of y'all are bitter. Some of y'all have some bitter feelings towards people Amen. that have dealt with y'all in a way that maybe they shouldn't have dealt with y'all. Some of y'all are yet to see that y'all was the one that was wrong to begin with. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you know what? Calvary will expose that. Yes. And not only will Calvary expose that if you let it, this is the key. You've got to allow it to take place. Amen. Calvary will expose it. And Calvary will deal with it. Amen. Calvary will put it to death. That's what he wants to do. He wants to put you and I to death. He wants to put those things in us to death. But we've got to be willing to see. We've got to be willing to open our eyes up to the things that God wants to, to show us. I've been listening to a song. And I believe it's, it's called Nobody Loves Me Like Jesus. Amen. I've been listening to that song, man. It's really been ministering to me. And, and, and there's another song I've been listening to. I, I was thinking of this one. Uh, uh, here's my heart, Lord. Have y'all ever heard that song? Mm -hmm. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. He says, Here, here's my heart. Here's my heart. And what he's saying is show it to me, Lord. Let truth examine my heart and judge my heart. And let truth show me my heart. 
And church, that's where you and I have to be as individuals. That we've come yeah. into this covenant that Christ has paid for. And we're saying, Lord, show me my heart. Lord, let me see the things inside of me that need to be addressed. Lord, the things that are wrong with me that need to be taken care of. The things that need to be addressed. Because we always have a tendency, church, listen to me, to talk about somebody else. To see the problem in somebody else's life. Yeah. To see the problem in somebody else's walk. To see what somebody else should be doing that they ain't doing. And we hear preachers talk about this all the time. But there comes a time as you and I are walking in this new covenant that we've got to examine ourselves at Calvary. We've got to get to a place in our relationship with God that it's about Him and I. It's about you and I, Lord. Let my eyes be fo so focused on me that I can't see the splinter in my brother's eye. Amen. 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 Hey, that's good preaching. I'm going to say like Brother Larson, I'm preaching better than you amen and on that one. Amen. That's where we need to be in our relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah. That it's Lord <coughs> exposed me. Let me see me. So we've got benefits, church, in, in this new covenant. He said, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through epignosis, experiential knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. That word divine is theos, and it means that, that that's coming from God. It's coming down from God. It's partaking in what's coming down from God. You have that because of Christ, because what he did for you at Calvary's cross and because of your simply walking in that. Amen. In first Peter chapter one, <coughs> I was going to read this whole thing, but I'm running out of time here. I'm going to start in verse three. Blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved for you in heaven. Uh, listen, listen to this. Who are kept by the power of God through faith Amen. unto salvation, yeah. Yeah. ready to be revealed in the last time. That's what he's going to do in you and I. He will keep us. Amen. As we're walking in proper faith. As we're trusting in who Christ is and what he did, God will keep us. He will empower us. He will fill us with his grace. Amen. I want to move on for that real quick because I'm, I'm trying to, to, uh, to really close this thing up. But you see, we've got to have more than just a mental knowledge, church, of what Christ did. It, it, it starts there. You've got to get a mental knowledge. But there comes a time in life where you've got to experience this grace, where you've got to experience this relationship with God as the Holy Spirit is moving and operating inside of you, as he's empowering you to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil, amen, as he's filling you with love that you never experienced, that you never imagined, a love for people that is out of nowhere, that is, it's not ordinary. Yeah. It's not ordinary. It's, it's out of this world. Amen? Pun intended. It's literally out of this world. It's so much different than the love of man. It's that agape love that we talked about a few, uh, a few weeks back when, when, when God is by His Spirit filling your heart with a love that doesn't make any sense. There's a song, and, and, and this guy made a song, Reckless Love. I'm not a real big fan of that reckless word with dealing with God's love. But I do want to say this, that from the human standpoint, when you look at what God did and how that he sent his only begotten son to die on an old rugged cross for a bunch of lost sinners like us, from the human mind, that can seem kind of reckless. Now, we know God's not reckless. He had a purpose and a plan Amen. for what he was doing. He knew the beginning from the end. All right. But that's a love unlike you and I can produce. It's a love unlike you and I can experience outside of covenant relationship with, who, with, with Christ. Outside of covenant relationship in who Christ is and what he did. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, real quick, I want to look at Titus chapter 2. Where I'm almost done. Y'all bear with me. Titus chapter 2, uh, verse 11. These, these right here have become some of my favorite scriptures over the last couple of months. As I've, seen the, as I've seen God producing in me by way of the Holy Spirit a life that I've never experienced before. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that 
denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen? We should be denying godliness, teaching us that denying godliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world. Now, a lot of places, that's called legalism. But in proper grace, that's called the work of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When you're walking in proper grace, amen, what, what did uh, James say? Faith without works is dead. You tell me about your faith and I'll show you the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. Yes. I'll show you the Spirit moving and operating and having His way and, and, and bringing about a production in my life, changing me. It's Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. This is the grace that we've been called into. Amen. We've been called into a grace where God has free reign to move and operate and to work on the inside of us to tear away, to rip away the old man, to put him to death, constantly being put to death and allowing the Holy Spirit to move and operate in us and have his way, teaching us how to walk in a godly manner, teaching us how to deny ungodliness, constantly filling us with the desire to be separate from the world, to not look like the world, to not walk like the world, to not talk like the world, to not act like the world, to not have church like the world. Thanks, we ought to have church. Amen. We ought to be separate, we ought to be different, and we ought to be every day being made more and more separate, separated unto the things of God because of the covenant. Listen, because of the covenant that Christ made with His Father on Calvary. Amen. He shed His blood for you. And you belong to Him. Your life is not your own. Amen. It's been bought with a price. And not something like silver or gold that's going to fade away that can be stolen. But with the precious blood, the spotless blood of Jesus Christ, you belong to Him. I'm here to ask you, are you allowing grace to have its work inside of you? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to move and operate and do inside of you what He wants to do? And at the least, are you at least crying out for that? That's right. Are you at least desiring? Listen, if you're not experiencing it, like the Bible says you should be experiencing it, then you ought to at least be crying out for it. You ought to at least be acknowledging, look, Lord, I'm, I'm putting all my trust, my faith in you, and I keep falling flat on my face. I keep falling over and over again, doing the same things over and over again. I'm sick and tired of it, Lord. I need victory. I, I need the benefits. I need to walk in this victory, Lord. Listen, fight to believe. Fight to hold on. If you're struggling tonight, if you find yourself in failure tonight, if you know that your life is not what it should be, listen, don't quit. Amen. Don't quit. Hold on. Hold tight. If you're sitting here and you know that you've been born again, you know that the Spirit of God has moved into your heart and regenerated you, don't quit. Don't give up. Listen, the plan works. The plan works. God said He's, he he's going to finish the work. Right. Fight to believe. Fight to, to hold on. Cry out. Ask Him to show you. So don't quit if it's not there. But if it's not there, don't settle. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't settle with less than what Christ paid for. Amen. 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 Don't settle with less than what Christ paid. I want it all. Yes. I want holiness. I want righteousness. I want to be separated Amen. from this world. I want to not care if they think I'm an idiot or if they think I'm a moron. I want to not care about that. I want, Lord, only to care about what you say. Only to care about what you think, Lord. But, Lord, inside of myself, inside of me, those are not the things I think about, Lord. Those are not the things I want. So you, Lord, by your Spirit's going to have to do a work, Lord. You're going to have to go to work, Lord. You're going to have to place inside of me a greater... That's what I used to cry out for. When I was in failure, I said, Lord, I just want to desire you, Lord, like I desire the things of this world. Lord, I want to want you more than what I want the things of this world, Lord. I want to chase after you, Lord, like I used to chase after those things, Lord. But I don't know what to do. I can't make inside of me those things happen. I need you to go to work, Lord. I need you to do it in me, Lord. We need the moving in the operation of the Holy Spirit, church. Not just to cause us to walk in the gifts of the Spirit but to produce the fruit of the Spirit yes. in our lives so that we can be a beautiful tree full of fruit. Yes. 
when Jesus walks by that he won't curse us, but he'll walk up to us and say, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I want. That's what I want to do in your life. That's what he wants to do inside of you, church. He wants to produce inside of you things that are out of this world, things that you can't do. Religion can't do it for you. I can't do it for for you. Psychiatry, no drugs can do it for you. But through the blood of Jesus, the moving and the adoration of the Holy Spirit, do things inside of you that you can't imagine. He will do things inside of you that you can't understand. And I'm not telling you something that I heard. I'm telling you something that I'm experiencing right now. I'm talking about what I know. It's available to you all. Amen? Amen. It's available. Amen. Hey, look, I'm almost done. Y'all bear with me. Amen. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live in sober. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Colossians tells us that we're complete in Him. That all the fullness of the godly, uh, of the uh, Godhead bodily, were placed in Him, and we are complete in Him. Amen. God looks down upon you and I as we express faith in who Christ is and what He did, and He sees a completed product. Amen. It's what He sees. And because of the completed product that he sees, he's able to go to work inside of us, working towards the completion of that product. But in Christ, we are complete. In Christ, because of who Christ is and what he did and our being united with that, the covenant, we have benefits. Amen. My last set of scriptures tonight. I hope I'm not boring you too much. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. A couple of my favorite set of scriptures here. Use these all the time. He said, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as much as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And like Brother Larson explains in the Greek, that's a mathematical term. He said, What's the answer? God plus a sinner, what should be taking place? What should happen? Righteousness, holiness. God will produce those things in your heart and in your life. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's something that's missing from the church today is fear and trembling. There ought to be a reverential fear for who God is and what he did. When we come into the house of God, there ought to be a reverential fear in us. We ought to be careful about how we approach worship. We ought to be careful about how we approach the things of God when we see service getting started and things like that. We ought to be careful because we don't want to interfere with what God might be doing with somebody else. Maybe you just come in and it's just any other night and it's just, hey, la, la, la. But we ought to have a reverential fear about what God wants to do. We ought to come in this place prepared in our relationship with God, ready to receive, or even more important than that, ready for somebody else to receive. Hey, I want to receive, but what's more important than me receiving is you receiving. That's what God is doing in my life. He's causing me to desire that my brothers and sisters receive from him what they have need of, that if they need a touch from him, that they receive it. And I don't want to do anything to get in the way of that, to mess that up. Amen. Amen. Fear is missing. A reverential fear of who God is and what he's capable of and what he's accomplished is missing in the in the church today. We need to ask the Lord to bring that back in us. Because what is what does he do with those that fear him? Psalms tells us that he shows them his covenant. What it says. Psalms said he shows his covenant to those that fear him. You want to grow in Calvary? Allow the Lord to place a reverential fear inside of inside of you. That's been another one of my prayer. Lord, cause me to fear you like I feared you at one time, a reverential fear of who you are. Not a fear that you're going to strike me dead, Lord, but just because of who you are. Reverence, respect of his godliness. Amen. Amen. This is it right here, for it is God. This is why you should work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God that works in you, both to will and do of his good pleasure. Is God at work in you? Evaluate yourself. Work out the mathematics. Check and see. You and God, y'all in a relationship. Is he doing in you what he wants to do? Is he accomplishing in you what his word says he's come to accomplish? Is he separating you? Are you being more and more sanctified, set apart for the holiness and the righteousness and the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit inside of you to have his way? Evaluate yourself. 
Stop evaluating your brother and sister and evaluate yourself. <laughs> Stop evaluating your wife and your kids all the time. Evaluate yourself. Evaluate yourself. Get yourself right, mama and daddy, and them kids will get right. Get your relationship right. Let them see, like I said the other day, let them kids see that relationship inside of you yes. going on in your life. Cause them to desire what you got. Yeah, Listen, kids are very influential when they're young. Amen. Yes. We need to train them up when they're young. Some of us have missed that. Now our kids are some of them are a little bit older. But if you've got young kids in here, don't miss that opportunity to train them up. And if you're not in right relationship with God by His Spirit moving and operating in you, you're not going to be able to train them up in the way that they should go. You might be able to train them up in church, but you're not going to be able to train them up in a way. It's a big difference. Amen. Amen. So that's where we are, church. We have a better covenant, and we're beneficiaries of that better covenant. Listen, we have a spiritual responsibility to make sure that this <coughs> salvation in Christ that we have been freely given is not neglected, but rather that it is carried out in the manner that God intended it to be. That's our spiritual responsibility. Walk in the faith. Evaluating yourself constantly. Are you, are you walking in the faith? Well, how do I know if I'm walking in the faith? Well, if you're properly believing, the Holy Spirit will be properly working. And just because you know it in your brain, don't mean you're truly properly believing it from your heart. Okay? Like Brother Larson says, a lot of times it takes sometimes a good while for it to drop that six inches. Some of y'all got longer next to me. It might be 12 inches. But it takes sometimes a little bit longer for it to drop from that brain down into your heart and for that experiential knowledge to start taking place. So don't give up. Keep looking to who Christ is and what he did at Calvary. And I guarantee you that God's going to show up and you're going to experience what he wants you to experience. But what I'm telling you is don't settle for less than all of the benefits that you have in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't settle for less, church. Yes. Amen. 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 Let's stand together. I guarantee you, I, each and every one of us, if we were to go to uh, McDonald's and order a 12-piece nugget and, and drive away and we only had 10, we'd be turning around, Jack, and getting what we are. Amen? Well, I'm talking about Christ shed his blood. Yeah. For you to walk in victory, for you to walk in holiness, for you to walk in righteousness, for you to have the moving and the operation of His Holy Spirit inside of you. He shed His blood because He wants to do that inside of you. He wants to give it to you. He wants you to have it. Don't settle for less.